This is the first vlog I'm vlog. I'm gonna keep these hopefully going on a weekly basis. Keep you up to date on any new products like stickers or control arms or whatever I'm working on. Or, you know, let you guys know that there'll be a new event video coming out. Uh, today, I'm gonna be replacing the wheel bearing on Roshi. Got a new limited slip in, gonna have that replaced this week. Can't really drive him all the way to Oklahoma City with the bad wheel bearing. So we're gonna go yank the one off the parts car, swap it on here. Hopefully you guys enjoy watching. So one of the perks of living kind of out away from everybody is got a whole lot of property, which lets me kind of hoard cars like I do. Here's the parts 86. It's a uh, it's kooky, but same front wheel bearings. Uh, when we got it, the driver's side wheel bearing on Roshi went out, and this one had brand new ones, so I'm hoping the passenger side is the same way. Even if it's not, they've got a lot less play than the ones on Roshi right now. So let's get to it. So some of the tools that you're going to need for this, I uh, got my socket set here, screwdriver in case I need to pry the caliper off the rotor, which I think is probably likely, and a jack and jack stands because safety first, everybody. <clears throat> Lug nuts, get the car up in the air. So let's see how this goes. I'm a big fan of putting the jack stand kind of underneath the, uh, the original jacking points. You can usually find it because it's a, it's a plate on your frame rail. Now with that out of the way, take the lug nuts off. If I remember correctly on this car, they are 19. And for, for any of you looking at maybe buying a socket set, Highly recommend these cobalt pass-through ones. Having the pass-through has saved me lots of times, especially on uh, cars with extended lug nuts. Or extended lug studs, I'm sorry. But on this car, I don't have that issue. And I only put them on hand tight because obviously the car is not going anywhere. So. Alright. Only two lug nuts because again, car's not going anywhere. Mostly bought it for parts. Might do something with it later. Who knows? So we got that wheel out of the way. And if we come over here, we can see caliper here, the rotor, which you know doesn't have any play but is also rusted in place, so that's a little hard to judge right now. But we're gonna try to take off the two caliper mounting bracket bolts because we need this whole thing to come off. So, it's been a little while since I've done this, but if I remember correctly, they are 17s, which on most Toyotas you're going to find it's a 17, a 14, or a 10. Always make sure your socket's going the right way. I've done that many times. Oddly enough, this car seemed to have had some love from the previous owner before I got it. Lots of pretty good parts, had some tech toy stuff on the rear, and because it appears to have been worked on before I got it, a lot of this stuff isn't really rusted in place, which for anybody with old Japanese cars, you guys know that's a huge problem. That's something I've dealt with pretty much all the time because I only drive Japanese stuff, and whatever they make it out of rust basically immediately, which kind of sucks. I hate going after these bolts blind, but I'm also kind of scared of spiders and I don't want to stick my head up in this nasty ass wheel well. Got this top one finger tight here. I think we're lucky and got the bottom one at the same point. 
one bolt out. Okay, maybe that bottom one needs a little bit more work before I can take it out by hand. There we go. Okay. Bolt number two. All right, so now this is where my screwdriver comes in handy. As I mentioned, this is really rusted in place, so you're just gonna kind of use this to pry it off here. Sometimes you gotta get creative when you don't have a long screwdriver. I can't, I wasn't able to find mine, but there we go. Got that off there. Normally, and as you'll see on Roshi, I wouldn't, play around with the brake line like this, trying to get this to stay, but this car's not going anywhere anytime soon, so I really don't care. Okay, next step. Take these dust caps off. Usually these can be kind of a pain, especially if the car's been sitting. And I'm going to do something probably really shouldn't do, but I'm a fan of using tools in ways they weren't intended. So, I'm just going to kind of use the handle of my big half-inch socket here. Kind of just work my way around this guy. So we, we start to see it kind of popping off here. Just kind of work my way. These bearings are actually in really good shape. And the only play is actually from... It appears to be the ball joint, so we should be okay. <clears throat> Anyways, back to taking the dust cap off. And you can kind of tap it in and turn the screwdriver a little bit. I find that sometimes helps get particularly tricky ones off. Just kind of work your way around until it comes off like that. You can see it's a little beat up on the inside, but it's clean in here. So next, we get to take off these wonderful little cotter pins. These things are evil and I really don't like them but they hold everything in place, so everything's got its place to be in life. So, I'm just gonna kinda use a screwdriver, pop those down. Just realized I forgot pliers to make this a lot easier. I'll be back. All right, so to deal with these cotter pins, I like to go at them with a combination of uh, wire cutters and some pliers, whatever you got on hand. I like to start by clipping this top piece right here. Get it in two parts, makes it a little easier to take out. And then you just kind of got to wiggle it around here. The straighter you can get the pieces, the easier they will come out. Let's hope I get lucky here. Maybe, it's coming out. And always kind of lean your head back. I hit myself in the face with pliers before, it doesn't feel too good. Sometimes if I get frustrated, realize I'm not getting anywhere with it, I'll take the wire cutters cut a little bit more off of the ends. The shorter they are, the easier they come out. Just like, when they're straighter, they come out easier. See, it's one piece out. And drop it there. Probably forget about it, mow it over with the lawnmower. The other piece always comes out way easier because there's less holding it in. Okay. So now that those are out, take your dust cap, take off this little crown looking piece. And now we come to this nut, which I don't remember the size. Obviously not a 20. I think it's a 22. It's a 22. So then, these, it shouldn't be tight at all. So you'll just break it over. Spin that bad boy off. And you want to try to keep these pieces as clean as possible so you don't have to clean them up later. 
got that off. And now you just kind of gently pull it. I like to kind of do it in stages to make sure I don't drop anything. So here we've got the washer with the little, it's got a little locating tab on it. I don't know if you can see that, but it slides onto the spindle. And then we've got these bearings, which are in really good shape, actually. And as you can see, they had no play in them. One thing about bearings that is annoying, and I haven't found a good way to deal with it, is all the grease that you'll get everywhere. There's a reason all of my pants started out gray and ended up black. Let's just put it that way. So now, once you got all those little pieces on the outside out, you just slide it off very carefully. Give it a little look over. This actually has uh, Koyo bearings in it, which is interesting because the other side had SKF, if I'm not mistaken. But they have no play. This one's got a little bit of rust in it, but it felt solid on the car. So hopefully it'll hold me over till I can afford the uh, Techno Toy Tuning um, aluminum hubs, which I'd really like to get, knock a little bit of weight off the car. But that's how you take the hub off. So the next thing to do, clean up all your tools. Make sure you don't lose anything. I'm going to leave the bolts and lug nuts up in this spring perch until I come back and throw the other hub on it so I can set the car down. But next step would be to go inside, fire up the air compressor, remove this brake rotor so it's ready to accept the new rotor. So, uh, I'll see you guys in the garage. Alright, so for the next step, got to remove the rotors from the back of the hubs. I like an impact gun because I'm lazy and it gets the job done much faster than anything else. So, pretty much just find your tiny things, hook it up and crank them out. There's one. from what was an OEM rotor. So my dust trap over here so I won't drop anything. Take these out. And I'm not gonna even use these bolts, I'm gonna reuse the bolts that came off of Roshi that go with the big brake kit. Not a fan of using OEM stuff. Although I'll make an exception for the the uh, the lug studs in this case because I have to. So, set that one aside for now. Get the next one up. Switching to a different one because these bolts are slightly different. And for those wondering, this is the Silvermine brake kit. It uses FC calipers on the front. It does a fantastic job with autocross. One downside is I'm giving up on these uh, these lug studs on Roshi, but they were cut down, so I don't know how much I trust them anyways. <sighs> so now we got to knock the rotor off of this hub. The way I like to do that is to grab your favorite sledgehammer, 
and you want to hit the rotor, not the not the hook. And just kind of give it a few hits, and eventually. should be able to kind of stand on the edges and work the hub out there. So, here's our hub that's going to go on Roshi. Still rocking the OEM uh, studs, but now he'll match side to side, so it's not a huge deal. But uh, for those of you wondering why the uh, <coughs> that big brake kit works so well, here's an OEM rotor does all right. Here's the upgraded rotor. There they are side by side. It's much thicker, much larger, you get much better heat dissipation that way. So the next step, take the hub that you're going to be putting on the car and going to put the rotor on it. And there is a torque spec for these, but the torque specs for these OEM rotors, this uses rotors from the R53 Mini Cooper with the, uh, the bolt pattern for the back of the hub drilled into it. So I just kind of do what you probably shouldn't and run it on with an impact gun. I don't, you know, just run it down. I just kind of go a couple ugga duggas but I do try to get it as tight as possible by hand first just you know just cause hand hand tightening at first works best I gotta grab a half inch ratchet it's just it's one of those things where I'd almost rather it be slightly too tight for what this car gets used for. And you want to tighten these like you tighten wheel bolts. You want to go, so if you do the one here, you want to do the one exactly opposite from it. And you don't want to get them all the way tight one at a time. You want to kind of go Follow the pattern until they're tight. I'm just gonna keep going. Get back to here. Good medium grunt on that. Just a nice. Just kind of go around. Sock it off, you know, build up some more air, and then we'll give them. There you have it, new rotor on the hub. So the next step, my least favorite part, clean out the old grease, put some new grease on it. All right, so I'm gonna grab some gloves. So dealing with you know cleaning and re-greasing bearings is about the only time you'll see me wear gloves when I'm working on stuff. That's because I hate grease getting on everything because it, it will it'll get on everything so just grab a couple paper towel and shove it down in there. just kind of try to clean out as much of the old the old grease as possible same goes for this outer band just clean it up all nice and good there Okay, I've done that. I've got this 
at least from the parts store. Nothing fancy. And just take some on your finger and just work it through. You want it thoroughly coated, but not like soaked. I like to kind of spin it, work it through the rollers there. And take a little bit more, coat the race on the inside, and then pop that in there. Okay. And then the next part. Be careful to try not to get too much on the rotor. You then take some of this and just kind of all up in that business. Just a whole bunch in there. I'm not going to show this step, but you should take some grease and go slap it on your spindle. Alright, with that repacked, now it's time to install this on the car. Alright, so now that we got the hub on, caliper on, wheel on, turns, there's no free play there. I'm gonna let it down, I'm gonna torque it. I like to do about 84, 85 foot pounds for my leg studs, and then good to go. And that's in slow light. And like I said, when I was doing the wheels, you always want to have a pattern. Right, we'll do this one. Get that click. Hop across to the one opposite from it. Same thing. And then I always kind of just run through again just to kind of make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be well and with that good folks that is first vlog how to change a wheel bearing thing see you guys next week peace